Welcome back to Digital Academy, the complete Python development course for beginners. In the previous tutorial, you may have discovered Python iterations, for and while loops, which are one of the core concepts, when you want to repeat a block of code multiple times, either for a fixed number of times, or indefinitely. In this brand new video, you will now discover dictionary in Python, so you can, create it, add and remove an item, iterate through a dictionary, searching for, and accessing a specific item inside of the collection, plus various built-in methods. Please, do not forget to smash that like button, for the YouTube algorithm, since it does really help supporting us, and providing new free content, once a week. You may also want to follow Digital Academy, on our other social platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Patreon. This way, we could, stay in touch, grow this community, then share and help each other, throughout this exciting journey, our journey. Are you interested to be part of this community? All the links are in the description below. Now, let's play this video. Definition. Dictionary in Python is a collection of items, which is unordered, indexed by keys and mutable, so it can be changed, once it has been created. While other data types have value as an element, a dictionary has a key, value, pair, where each key is mapped to a single value. Consequently, dictionaries are optimized to get values, when the key is known. The important properties of Python dictionaries, are as follows. Dictionaries are unordered, items stored in a dictionary are not kept in any particular order. Dictionaries are mutable, they can be changed in place, can grow, and shrink, on demand. Accessed by keys, dictionary items are accessed by keys, not by their position. Dictionaries can be nested, a dictionary can contain another dictionary, and so forth. Great! Now that you have understood what a dictionary is, let's move forward and discover how to create a dictionary in Python, but also what are all of the operations you can perform on it, in order to, add, remove, or access an item, or even search for a specific item inside of the dictionary. Creating a dictionary in Python is as simple as placing key, value, items inside curly braces, separated by comma. And each key is separated from its associated value, by a colon. While values can be of any data type and can repeat, keys must be unique, and of immutable type, like string, number or tuple with immutable elements. Let's have a closer look at its syntax, so you can declare your own dictionary. Here is an example, in which you want to store an employee record. First, let's declare an empty dictionary, using curly braces. Eventually, you will add all of the personal information about the employee, so you can store its information and then access it, later. Consequently, you will get as result a dictionary with the age, city, job, name and email address of an employee. Dictionaries are pretty straightforward, but here are a few points you should be aware of, when using them. Keys must be unique. A key can appear in a dictionary only once. Even if you specify a key more than once during the creation of a dictionary, the last value for that key becomes the associated value. Notice that the first occurrence of the key name Jeremy has been replaced by the second one Digital Academy. Key must be immutable type. You can use any object of immutable type as dictionary keys, such as numbers, strings, booleans, tuples. Otherwise, an exception is raised, when mutable object is used as a key. Value can be of any type. There are no restrictions on dictionary values. A dictionary value can be any type of object, and can even appear in a dictionary, multiple times. There are lots of other ways to create a dictionary. You can convert two value sequences into a dictionary, using the built-in function dict. The first item inside each sequence is then used as the key, and the second, as the value. You can also use the dict function along with the zip function, to combine separate lists of keys and values, obtained dynamically, at runtime. Eventually, you may also want to create a dictionary with default values for each key. If you are interested in any of these cases, or want more detailed examples, please go on our website, digital.academy.free.fr, and check out this post. Adding or updating dictionaries items is very easy. Dictionaries are mutable, which means you can add new items or change the value of an existing item using assignment operator. If the key is already present, the value gets updated, else, a new key, value, pair is added into the dictionary. Adding an entry to an existing dictionary is simply a matter of assigning a new key and value pair. If the key is new, it is added to the dictionary with its value. 
Here is an example, in which a new item is added into the dictionary, with the key city, and its associated value Paris. If the key is already present in the dictionary, its value will be replaced by the new one. Thus, if you want to update an entry, you can just assign a new value to an existing key. Here is an example, in which you will update the value of the key name, which has a value Digital Academy, and replace its value with Jeremy. Of course, dictionary elements must be accessible, somehow. If you do not get them by index, then how would you get them? While indexing is used with other container types to access values, dictionary use keys. Values can be retrieved from a dictionary by specifying its corresponding key, in square brackets. Here is an example that prints the value of the key, name. Nonetheless, if you refer to a key that is not in the dictionary, you will get an exception. To avoid such exception, you can use the special dictionary get method. The difference while using get, is that it returns none, instead of key error, if the key is not found. And returns the value associated to its key, if key is in the dictionary. There are several ways to remove items from a dictionary. Either by its key, the last inserted item, a random item, or even remove all of them, at once. If you know the key of the item you want, you can remove a particular item in a dictionary, by using the function pop. This function removes an item with the provided key, and returns its value. For instance, this example removes the key age, and returns its value. If you do not need to keep, nor use the removed value, you can also use the del keyword to remove individual items. To delete an entry, use the del statement, specifying the key to delete. Here is the same example, when you want to remove the key age, but do not return its value. Sometimes you need to iterate through a dictionary in Python and delete its items sequentially. To accomplish this task, you can use the function pop item, which will remove and return the last inserted item from the dictionary. Please note that in Python versions before 3.7, the pop item method removes a random item, not necessarily the last inserted. All the items can be removed at once, using the clear method. Consequently, it will delete all keys and values from the dictionary. You can also use the del keyword, to remove the entire dictionary itself. There are three dictionary methods that return all of the dictionary's keys, values and key value pairs. These methods are useful in loops that need to step through dictionary entries, one by one, because all the three methods return iterable object. Keys. This method return an iterable object containing the list of all the keys present inside the dictionary. Values. On the other hand, this method return only a list of all the values inside the dictionary. Eventually, you may need to get both of them, at the same time. Fortunately, the items function provide this ability, and will return a list of tuples, in which, each one of the item, is composed of the key, and its associated value. If you want to know if a key exists in a dictionary, use the in and not in operators, with the if statement. You can also use keys method, to check whether your key is part of the dictionary's keys. On the other hand, to check whether a certain value exists in a dictionary, you must use in operator, combined with the values method. Here are a few examples, before you start practicing on your own. First, let's assume you have a dictionary, my dict, with the following properties, age, job and name. Next, you want to check whether the key, name, is part of this dictionary. Then, you will type name, in, my dict, which will return the boolean value true, since, name, is present inside the dictionary's keys. Another way to do the exact same thing, is to explicitly mention in which part of the dictionary you want to search, using the keys function. Let's try with another one, and test whether, salary, is present. Did you guess it? That's right, salary, is not inside dictionary's keys, consequently, it will only result in the boolean value false. And this is exactly the same when you want to check if a value is inside the dictionary, except that you will use the values function. For instance, checking whether, digital academy, is a value of my dictionary will return true, but, Jeremy, will not. You got it. To check whether a key, or a value, is part of my dictionary, just use the, in, operator, combined with the associated function, keys or values. Dictionaries are a very useful and widely used data structure, in Python. As a developer, you will often be in situations where you will need to iterate through a dictionary, while you perform some actions on its key value pairs. 
When you are working with dictionaries, it is likely that you will want to work with both the keys and the values. One of the most useful ways to iterate through a dictionary in Python, is by using items, which is a method that returns a new view of the dictionary's items, and will contain all of the key value pairs as tuples key value inside of a list. On each iteration, the current tuple will be unpacked in the form of key value, so you can either access the key or the value individually. If you just need to work with the keys of a dictionary, then you can use keys function, which is a method that returns a new view object containing the dictionary's keys. On each iteration, the current item will only be the key, not its associated value. If you use a dictionary in a for loop, it traverses the keys of the dictionary by default. But it is also common to only use the values to iterate through a dictionary in Python. One way to do that is to use values, which returns a view with the values of the dictionary. On each iteration, the current item will only be the value, not its associated key. Eventually, you may want to find how many key value pairs a dictionary has. In that case, you do not have to iterate through a dictionary and count each item, but use the function len, which returns the number of items in a dictionary. Awesome, it's your time to practice now. Let's assume you will have a dictionary, containing the exact same key value pairs, that we have used in all of the previous examples. First, declare this dictionary, my dict, and add a few items inside of it, age equals 27, job equals YouTuber, my key equals like, comment, subscribe, and name equals Digital Academy. Then, you want to check whether a specific key, my key, is inside this dictionary. And, only if it is, iterate throughout the dictionary. Print the value of this key when found, then stop the entire loop as soon as you encountered it. Otherwise, if you did not find this key, print an error message. Here is a solution, and may vary from yours. First, check whether my key is in the dictionary's keys, so you don't have to iterate through the dictionary if not necessarily, and save some time to your program. Then, if this expression returns true in the if statements, iterate though the dictionary using for loop. Combined with the items function, you will get a tuple key value for each iteration. Unpack it into two variables, k and v, so that you can later access them individually. Now, you want to check whether the current key k is the key you were looking for, if k equals my key. If so, you will enter the if statement, and print a success message, with the value associated to this key. Plus, you will break, as soon as you encountered your key. Since a key is unique in a dictionary, it won't continue with the next items, and saves some time during its execution. On the other hand, if my underscore key was not found inside of your dictionary, it will not even execute the for loop, but will enter the else clause and print an error message. And that's it, congrats. You have just written your first dictionary, iterated through this dictionary using for loop, and found a specific key's value. Notice that all of this code was not necessarily, since if my key was part of the dictionary's key, you could have get access to its value without even iterating through it. But that was a little exercise, so you can practice using for loops, if statements and dictionary, all of them combined, together. Please, do not forget to watch the videos about for loops, and the conditional if statements, if you need help understanding one of the core concepts, in Python. You may sometimes want or need to merge two dictionaries, so that you can have all of your data located in the same variable. Or update its values, with new content. Use the built-in update method, to merge the keys and values of one dictionary, into another. Notice that, this method blindly overwrites values, of the same key. If there is already an existing key inside of the first dictionary, its value will be updated with the new one. And new keys will be created, if there were not already existing. As you can see in this example, merging the two dictionaries will result in combining all of the items, and updating the ones that existed before. Finally, Python has a set of built-in methods and functions, that you can invoke on dictionary objects. Here are some of the most important, and used functions. Some of them have been covered throughout this Python tutorial for beginners. But, do not hesitate to pause this video and have a look at the Python documentation, if you need more information about what they can be used for, and how to use them. 
In this tutorial, you have learned in-depth use about dictionary, in Python. This kind of data types is used, when you want to store a pair of, key, value, and access a value in a very efficient way, thanks to its key. Consequently, you should now be able to, create a dictionary, add, update or remove a few items, and even search for a specific item. Dictionary should no be a secret anymore, and you can start using them in your program, straight away. In the next tutorial, you will discover another data type, in details, list. List is an ordered collection which is often used when you want to store item, in a particular order. So, do not waste any minute of it, and join us in the next episode. If you liked this video, please, do not forget to give a thumb up, and subscribe our channel. Digital Academy, Learn Free. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Like, comment, and share.